Hi everybody, it's Martin from the Washboard Resonators. I've just got this really weird 1960s resonator guitar. So let's find out all about them. And heck, let's find out if these sound any good. Okay, so on this video, I'll give you a little bit of history about what these guitars are. Then we'll look at the specifics of the instruments, how they're made. We'll look at the details behind this instrument. It's just come back from having some work done on it by a very competent luthier. So I'll share about that. Um, yeah, and then let's give it a play. Let's see if we think it sounds any good or not. And then lastly, I've got a question for you guys and gals. I, I don't know whether to keep this or not. So I need your help with that. Okay then, so if you uh, have seen our uh, history of resonator guitar videos, on that video you'll know that um, resonators came around in the 20s and they've sort of carried on all the way through in different ways. This instrument is somewhere kind of in the middle of that history. This guitar was made in 1964 and what's really interesting about it is that it has a kind of fiberglass body and it is known, I believe, as a vagabond. So I can refer now to the excellent mark making book and what you'll see in there is that basically the factory was producing three of these uh, models of these guitars. So this one is branded Airline. The Airline branded guitars came in black and uh, seem to be listed in the catalogue as, as the Vagabond. What you'll also see is that the Supra one was in red and it was called a Folk Star. And then what you'll see is that the National branded one came in white and was called a, a Bluegrass 35. A lot of the national management after the Second World War did a new company called Valco and they made, you know, Supra, you'll have heard of. They kind of did some national guitars through the 50s and 60s. Um, to, to me, this is their attempt at making a resonator guitar that was sort of updated and modern for the 1960s. So the way these things are constructed is quite interesting. They seem to get two parts of the body and they make them in fiberglass in a mould and then the, the two parts are joined by a kind of like gasket seam. Um, they've got a very weird system for the neck. So the neck kind of screws in it here is a kind of, um, you'll see here, there's access to screw. So you can like tilt the neck and adjust the neck. What you end up with is, is a very weird and idiosyncratic guitar. I've seen pictures of these. I've seen Jack White with these. I've seen, you know, funky rootsy guys, Bob Log playing these. Uh, usually the pickup adders, uh, Jeff Lang. And I fancied um, seeing for myself if they're any good. So I bought this one very, very cheaply, got it home and just realised there were so many problems with it. Um, so I sent it to Steve Evans, who has a company called Beltona Instruments, and he's worked for uh, like Mark Knopfler and Eric, he's built guitars for Eric Clapton and... Um, he makes just some of the best resonator guitars and instruments, ukuleles, in the world. He happens to live 20 minutes that way. Uh, and I picked this up from Steve yesterday and I took this to Steve and I was like, I'm very sorry. Here you go. <laughs> and what he's done is put a new bridge and saddle on it because the original one, uh, the, the action was wrong and the intonation was out. So he's changed where the, the saddle is to, to get the intonation in. He's put a new nut on it. Um, what else has he done? Uh, oh yeah, and then there was a bit of a crack in the fretboard from I think this adjustment system and one of the pearl dots was missing. So he's you know, glued the fretboard, put a new dot in it. And basically he's got it playing really well. So let us look at the sounds now. I've compared it to other resonators and I'd say it's, it's probably thinner and not as loud. Let's just compare that. <laughs> So that gives you a bit of an idea, just comparing it to a normal style, you know, brass body 12 fret stylo. So the stylo is fatter. Surprisingly, now this has been worked on, it's louder than it was before it went away. Steve's done a great job to get, I guess, get the most out of this instrument. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's it, it, it was, you know, quite a lot thinner and, and quieter before it went away. Um, what do we think?
it's a, I think it's a funky sounding thing. I don't know if you could hear that then, but when you do the kind of very like open notes or you finish some kind of thing, there's a whole load of noise that carries on. One of the things that, that's very noticeable is that the gap between the, the, the bridge saddle and the tailpiece. It's very long and those strings have a lot of resonance. Same here. So I can really hear in the room that um, you get like a lot of that kind of natural reverb effect. Which is these, these bits sort of making sort of, you know, harmonics that sort of work or clash. Um, I think it would sound very different with, with that chuck, you know, a little bit of leather strapped th strap through or something. I don't know if we can hear much difference there. So I'm, like, I'm unsure about whether to keep this or not. And I, you know, what do you think? Is this, you know, I don't have much money in it. So there's that, that, that sort of double-edged sword. Would I keep this because it's just, it, it, it owes me very little? Or could I just sell it and put it towards something, you know, a wood body triolian from the 1920s or something nicer? Um, the thing which is kind of confusing is, yeah, I don't think it sounds as nice as some of the other ones, but it is unique and interesting. But what I really like about it, when you take your finger picks off and just play it, it's like a really nice couch guitar. If you were just working on, you know, song ideas of some description, you could just play this, you're not going to annoy anybody too much, but you're getting that kind of resonator response, you know, if you want to write something that's a bit more resonator based. Um, you know, people like Jeff Lang and, and, and um, Bob Logg, they used to put like little electric pickups on theirs and then, you know, in a way that's a perfect kind of, you know, rocking blues machine, isn't it? So do drop a comment below, let us know what you think. Also, you know, while you're kind of doing that, just look at the, uh, there's a little, um, triangle thing here you can open up the description box and you know do join our mailing list that is the best way to support us you can um, just do a little tip on the uh, coffee buy us a coffee thing a dollar it all helps keep the channel going and is much appreciated <laughs>15 uh, vintage resonators. Um, I think it's a nice thing to have as part of the, the whole kind of story and, and history of resonators. Um, you know, is it a great instrument for, you know, compared to the vintage resonators or the very nice NLPs that I gig with? I don't think so necessarily, but it's, it's interesting. And I hope this video helps people that might be looking at getting one of these. When I saw this was for sale, I was looking for videos and there was really nothing going over what the instrument was. And I didn't really know any of the information. Luckily, I've got Mark's uh, book. And uh, I happened to be talking to Mark on the phone when I actually pulled the trigger and bought this, funnily enough. Um, had him on speaker and I was like, yeah, go and buy PayPal. Um, yeah, so look, you know, I'm lucky that I get, you know, got to get some information. And Mark did say, he said, yeah, they, they sound like junk and they play like junk, but, um, they're, you know, they're fun and interesting. And I think that's, that's a very fair summarization. The next quite thin at this end and quite flat so at the moment it feels like there's not as much wood there as i'm used to in other necks but i'm sure you're getting used to that but um there we go i hope this video is just of interest i just thought i'd make a video while i've got it back and share the information i hope you know hope uh, you know a handful of people around the world find that interesting um so for now thank you very much my name is martin the band is the washboard resonators do help and support us we are professional musicians we do in normal non-covid times go out and play a couple of hundred times a year so anything you can do to help is much appreciated and uh, like subscribe share comment it really helps thank you bye bye for now